In this video, I'll go over the best reference material that I took to the civil PE exam. I'll go over both the AM and PM portions of the exam. For the PM portion, I took the structural depth. I'll describe the list of materials in order of importance for me when I took the exam. And I'll also leave links in the description below. And if you stick around to the end of the video, I'll also tell you a funny story that happened to me, which will illustrate why it's important to take the right calculator to the exam. Let's go. For the AM portion of the exam in the morning, I basically took two books. The first one was a binder that I made for the School of PE notes. And that was to me the most important one because I used that to study and I had it tabbed up and knew where to go, which sections to go for each question. The second one is the famous CRM, which is the Civil Engineering Reference Manual. And that was also helpful because it's just so much material. It covers a lot of ground, especially for some weird questions that you have no idea what it is about. But if you have your book, you know, tabbed up, you can open a couple pages, read a little bit and then find your answer there. That's all for the AM portion. I did not take a whole lot of material for the that portion of the exam, which is the breadth portion. Now for the PM civil structural depth portion of the exam, I took a lot of material and as you can see in the NCES website, there is a lot of material that they say you need to take to the exam. I didn't take all of them, but in order of importance, these are the ones that helped me the most and that I would recommend taking to the exam. And even if the exam is computer based at some point, some of this reference material I still use on a daily basis at work. So I'm really glad that I, I actually bought those books and I have them tabbed up because now I think it improved my knowledge base in structural engineering in general. The first one for me in the afternoon was this binder, which is the EET notes or the EET binder. And it was super helpful for me because I used that binder to study primarily to the exam. I solved probably about 80% of the practice problems and I knew exactly where to go during the exam. That's my number one recommendation for the structural depth from my experience. The second one is ASE 710, which I would actually, if you don't have ASE 710, I'd actually recommend buying 716 and having a summary of what's different between 710 and 716, just so you have more updated material because the exam will likely change it to 716 at some point. And if you use it at work, it's likely that you may already be using ASE 716. The next one is the steel construction manual. And this one, I loved, you know, having it all tabbed up. I used it during the exam and I still use it to this day at work. The next one is ACI 318.14. And that one was super helpful to have all the tabs there. And also I use it at work. So I'm glad I actually bought the hard copy of it. The next four books that I took are not as important as the first ones. The first ones that I mentioned, I was able to cover most of the questions, but these ones were important to get those outlier questions. Those questions that are very code specific that you have to have the book or the code with you so that you open a certain page and you read a little bit and find that the exact answer. And I'll list them quickly. The first one is NDS, which that you actually will likely find design questions as well related to NDS and you have to go to certain tables from the code. The second one is IBC, the International Building Code. And I didn't list it as the most important one because I found that the questions related to IBC are more code references that you just need to go to the code and then open it up and find the answer there. Third is PCI. If you have any precast question, you likely need to go to this book and know at least even if you don't have it tabbed up, go to the table of contents and find the specific topic for your question. And lastly, I would say the building code and specification for main street structures. And this book is important because there could be some code specific questions specifically to CMU. I didn't list it in the beginning because I had a lot of material covered already in my EET notes. So for design related questions, I wasn't going to this code and specification. I was going to my EET notes. This wraps up the code and books that I took to the exam that helped me pass in the first attempt. If you're still watching, 
also make sure to bring the right calculator to the exam and I'd say bring at least two in case one battery is not working properly the day of the exam and you have a backup. I brought two calculators and for some reason it escaped my mind or I didn't research properly that one of the calculators was not allowed and that was my main calculator that I was going to use in the exam. It's this calculator here. I will not put this link in the description below, but don't take it. Thank goodness I found out during the exam before it started. So I asked them if I could go back and put my calculator, my bad calculator with all my, my luggage, because if they caught me with the wrong calculator, when the exam started, I would have gotten kicked out. So thankfully I had the second calculator, which is this one here. And I will leave the link in the description below. Please make sure to always check the NCES website, which I will also have a link in the description below to make sure that you get the right calculator to the exam. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.